A Victorian court's released secretly filmed video apparently showing building union bosses coordinating last week's protest that ended in violent clashes with police. But the company at the centre of the dispute has turned from courtroom tactics to public relations. Grocon's released a letter that it says is signed by its workers that criticises the union's ongoing blockade. This morning, union members hurled abuse as police successfully escorted workers onto the Emporium site. Once again, police guarded Grocon workers as they were bussed into the Lonsdale Street site. One man filmed the workers arriving until a Grocon boss intervened. While the union didn't block entry, abuse was hurled at those returning to work. But the union says it was peaceful and not a dial a crowd situation. The union has been blamed for sending all text messages, tweets are out saying come down here, do this, do that. We don't do that. Workers just turn up when they're going into work. But in the Supreme Court, vision from last week's blockade is being used by Grocon to argue union bosses orchestrated the standoff. Filming, secretly carried out by the Fair Work Building Industry Inspectors, has been released by the court. Grocon says it shows union heavyweights, Bill Oliver, John Setka and three others, coordinating the blockade against court orders. It's claimed this vision shows crowds directed to follow police, which in turn ended up in this violent confrontation. Now, an open letter the company says has been written by Grocon workers has been made public. The letter says they don't support the blockade and have been singled out for abuse and intimidation. This is not something initiated by the company, but by the employees themselves, born out of their frustration. But the brinkmanship isn't over. The, the sooner that Dino Goller will, will come to the table and sit down and try, and try and end it, it will end. We are asking the CFMEU from you to simply follow the law. Police command are also keen to get their officers back to the beat. Sarah Farnsworth, ABC News, Melbourne.